This is the reality of fostering kittens. Last weekend, last Sunday in particular, noticed that one of our kittens, Junior, wasn't acting quite himself, wasn't as active as he normally is, and he was more or less just kind of sitting around being lazy, and that's not Junior. Junior runs around 100 miles an hour, he's the crazy orange kitten, and his brother Sausage, who is now Cheddar, but he's been passed on to a great home. And Monday comes around and still the same thing, it's just tired, sluggish, walking around. I haven't noticed if he's played, you know, we both work, normal jobs, so we're not here during the day, but I just noticed that he was acting a little funny. Tuesday comes around. <laughs> And that's when we know something was wrong. His breathing seemed a little labored. When you looked at him, his belly was going in and out. That wasn't right. So immediately called up the vet locally. Went to the vet, the one that I went to first, they couldn't treat him. Sent me to another place, which was more of an emergency vet and said that he needed to be on oxygen right away. Now, in the past, we've had kittens that we've taken in and similar circumstances usually upper respiratory infection. You could tell this wasn't an upper respiratory infection this time. It just seemed like he either had gotten into something or this something wasn't right, you know? And when I went into the vet, I gave, I gave them a list of everything, told them possibly could have gotten into something. Uh, we didn't really know. The one thing that I wasn't thinking about at the time, and we have had cats in the past, do this is aspiration when they breathe in uh, water or liquid into their lungs and it can cause pneumonia. So they took him back and uh, I was waiting in my car for a really long time. I think I was there almost two hours and uh, I get a phone call from the doctor and he tells me, okay, we're going to treat him for uh, parasites and put him on an antibiotic, give him some fluids and we'll keep an eye on him to see how he does. Well, luckily this vet, knowing that we didn't have a ton of money to spend, you know, we do this out of our own pocket, all the fostering and, and we do what we can. You know, we didn't have a ton of money at this point in time to five, six, seven hundred or thousand dollars on tests for a kitten that we were planning on probably adopting out anyway. Although he was growing on us very much so. My fiance and I had talked about possibly keeping him, even though we don't need any more kitty cats. So yeah, they were gonna give him antibiotics and just, you know, keep an eye on him and, and watch that he got better. So I'm waiting in my car and I get a phone call from the vet tech to come inside and um, that the doctor wanted to speak to me. When I went inside, they led me into a room I had a feeling something was going on. I had my phone recording at the time so that I could relay whatever information the doctor gave me or the vet gave me back to my fiance. And that way we both knew exactly what the diagnosis was, what to do to get Mr. Junior back to full health. So I'm sitting in this room for a very long time and the doctor comes in. So the doctor comes in and says, uh, you got some bad news. And I, I, when he said that, I knew what that bad news was because it couldn't get any worse than it already was. And, uh, he had passed. So what had happened is they went to draw blood from junior to do some tests which they were all doing all for free and I highly thank them for going as far as they were willing to go basically free of charge because we had given them uh, an amount that we could pay that day they were definitely exceeding the treatment that I thought we were going to get for the amount that we had at that point in time he went to draw blood from junior from his arm and at in which point he I don't want to get the word wrong. What the what it says on the paper is that he arrested. They went to draw draw blood from his arm and he arrested. So what they concluded was the most probable factor to Junior getting sick so fast 
pneumonia, aspiration pneumonia. And, uh, you know, it literally was one day he was 100 miles an hour, and the next day he was bogged down. It just didn't make sense. He'd never seen this before. Like I said, we've done probably 10 litters so far, and maybe 40 kittens, give or take, in that 10 litters. And we've raised them and been able to rehome most of them and never had a problem. When we did have a problem, we took them to the vet and they got better. And this is definitely a uh, learning situation. The second that you see a kitten not acting like themselves, you know, uh, that they got to go to the vet right away. And I do blame myself for not acting faster. You know, I feel extremely guilty about it, and I'll just be truthful, is, is I feel like Junior probably would still be here if I had gotten him into the vet faster. Whether or not that's true, we never know. This has been the hardest one to deal with on my end. It's been extremely hard to deal with. I haven't taken a loss of an animal this hard in a long time, and it's mostly because of my own guilt, and I definitely will never let this happen again. I had cats in the past that, you know, aspirate, and or, you know, you see them breathe water in through their nose, it happens to kittens all the time. They dip their head in, in the water dish too far, and they sneeze afterwards. You know, you keep an eye on them, make sure that they're okay, but, uh... Yeah, this was this was a tough one. So that's why there hasn't been any uploads this week. Is you know all the footage that I have, little juniors and all of it, because that's the way he was. He was a hundred miles an hour. He wanted to be with humans all the time. When you're in the kitchen, he's on your shoulder, trying to look over sh your shoulder, doing seeing what you're doing. He was just always there. Therefore, he was always on camera, and it's hard. Right now, I'm just starting to be able to look at my footage again and start to put videos together. But I feel it's very important to get this one video out. I've had it in my head all week that I was going to do a video like this so people know the realities of fostering kittens is they may be fine one day, then the next they could be, you know, complete opposite. You just never know. You know, there is what they call uh, kitten uh, sudden sudden death syndrome, which we've never experienced, knock on wood. You know, this wasn't that. It was pneumonia, aspiration pneumonia. Yeah, I just want to remember Junior as the happy-go-lucky fun kitten that he was. My fiancé said a great thing, and it's maybe, maybe he knew he only had a little time to live. That's why he was always going 100 miles an hour, and that's why he was always up getting involved in things, you know? He was unlike the others. He was just, he was just different. Cats kind of choose you, and he was almost to the point of of asking us, hey, can I stay here? He had a ton of energy, and he was super friendly. And I'm going to leave some clips of him that I haven't released yet. <laughs> He's a big reason that Muggsy and Friends channel has, has gotten the traffic that it has, because his video is the number one video on the page. That's another thing as to, I've never videotaped my, my kittens before, or my cats before, the way I have been the last few months, and I think that's another reason why I got so close to him, is that not only spending that time with him one-on-one, -on -one, but also sitting there for hours editing and seeing the funny stuff that he does and watching it over again. This was just a really hard one. I was going to work with tears in my eyes and nose completely stuffed up, pretending I had allergies. I just felt it was important that everybody knows that the reality of fostering kittens is they don't all make it. You can go one litter and lose one, or you can go 10 litters and lose one go 100 litters. It's not all kittens are make it. And uh, do what you can. Get them to the vet as soon as possible. Even if you don't have the money, at least take them there. There's, there's a lot of places that will work with you. In my opinion, it's better to have tried than not tried at all. And if it comes down to a kitten living a miserable existence outside, you know, full of parasites and, and just probably going to die or, or taking them in and trying to nurse them back to health and just doing what you can to give them a shot, I'm more for giving them a shot than anything else. You know, it's a little life. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed to this channel. And uh, I promise from here forward, um, I'll be delivering a lot more content. Like I said, it's just been hard to look at some of these videos the last, last week. 
I guess that's really it. I, all I have to say on Junior. And may he rest in peace. He's in God's hands now. I'm sure Kitty Heaven beats his foster house. So I'm sure he's up there with his little rainbow ball. Prancing around. Doing his little dance. But man. It's so hard. It's so hard. Thanks for watching.